to me, I saw it as this is about an old lady, a horny old lady who wanted to get some dick and because she couldn't, she would kill him off one by one. Y'all yeah, see this here? This is what's called a pressure pill. This is what you take to keep your blood pressure. You see this here? This is what's called the pressure pill. You take this to keep your blood pressure from reaching dangerous levels. And being this is my first time doing a top 10 worst list, I need this motherfucker. Let's start the show. All right, before I get into my top 10 worst movies of 2022, just want to throw out some honorable mentions out there. And these movies I'm about to mention are not so much that I hate them, but that I was disappointed in them. And a couple of them I thought were good, but then after a second viewing, I found out they were terrible because I watched them in Dolby. So those honorable mentions are Thor Love and Thunder. I gave this movie a B- in my review. After a second viewing on Disney+, Plus, I realized the movie absolutely sucked, okay? But I got tricked by the Dolby experience. I'm getting better at that. That's been my kryptonite. But trust me, y'all, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Hopefully not. Next honorable mention is Nope. Now, I gave this movie a C in my review. Now, this is a movie that I thought was going to be excellent because Jordan Peele, he came through with Get Out. Us was different and weird, but I did enjoy it. So, the premise of Nope kind of had me okay, Lou. I think this is going to be the one that I'm going to be like, okay, this might be Jordan Peele's masterpiece. And nah, that should put me to sleep. Even after Q broke it down to me what it meant, because that movie went way over my fucking head, I said, uh, I'm, I'm good with that one. So yeah, Nope is also um, honorable, uh, honorable mention. Okay, the pressure bill hasn't kicked in yet. And uh, JP Dominion, Jurassic Park Dominion, another one where I gave a B minus borderline C because I watched it in Dolby. A uh, decent dinosaur action, but for a Jurassic World movie, a Jurassic Park movie, it really missed the mark. It really was about flying locusts. And after listening to what people said about it, you know how they say, I like this movie, changed my mind. So at first I think the movie wasn't that bad until I started hearing people break it down. And yeah, guess what? Uh, it changed my mind. Yes, I, yeah, this movie is not very good. All right, so now that I got those out the way, let's get into the top 10 worst movies. My, my personal worst movies now. Some of these movies people love, so don't get your panties up in a bunch, okay? Uh, some of these movies people did like, but to me... They either put me to sleep, bored me to death, I couldn't finish them, I was on my phone on Facebook the whole time, or watching Instagram models instead of watching the movie, so here we go. <laughs> Number 10 is X. Now, I did like the sequel, Pearl, but X to me was like, it, it, it sucked. It was just laughably bad, man. I mean, now, on a technical level, the movie was good, and so it was shot very well, it was directed very well, it was acted well, it, it, it looked like a damn... Uh, cheesy horror movie from the 70s. I think that's what they were going for, but I could not get past the premise, okay? I've heard people break this down and say, no, well, the real meaning of the movie is about getting old and all this and that. To me, I saw it as this is about an old lady, a horny old lady who wanted to get some dick, and because she couldn't, she would kill him off one by one. That's what I got out of it, okay? She, she, wanted, she wanted to get her butt wet, and nobody wanted to touch her, and then she jasoned him one by one. That's what I got out of it. I laughed my ass off, especially the part where her and the, the husband, who were both like 80 years old, was in the bed getting it on. You hear the mayonnaise while they're, they're clapping cheeks, and I just, I couldn't take the movie seriously. So yeah, X is number 10. <laughs> number 9 is The Northman. It's funny, I watched Jeremy John's uh, top 10 best list, and spoiler, spoiler, The Northman made number 1. I said, holy shit, well his number 1 is my number nine worst movie because the Northman put me to sleep and I tell the story over and over again. I guess I tell it again. The only time I got some excitement out of this movie was when an old lady in the audience started choking. Yes, so I dozed off. I woke up to somebody getting their throat slashed on screen. They fell to the ground and then I hear, oh my God, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I said, damn, that's some good ass sound, man. Yo, yo, it's just starting to pick up. And it was an old lady coughing and gagging because somebody sprayed too much cologne on and she couldn't take it. But other than that, The Northman, it, it didn't do it for me. I, I was expecting Conan the Barbarian or Gladiator, and what I got was maybe a too realistic Viking movie, because some people praise it for being a realistic Viking movie, I guess, but how do you know for sure who, was, who the fuck was around in the Viking days? But um, yeah, it didn't do it for me yet, so The Northman can kick rocks. <laughs> Number eight is The Man from Toronto. Kevin Hart has another movie on this list as well. I think Kevin Hart needs to stay away from acting and doing movies. 
because he just does the most. He's like an annoying mosquito that just buzzes around your ear and you slap it away, it goes away from it, then it comes back, it just annoys the fuck out of you. And that's Kevin Hart in movies. Now, on Instagram, on social media, and even on his podcast, and he, he, he's, he's fine, okay? But lately, stand-up in movies, not so much his thing. And the reason why this movie is lower on the list is because somewhere in there, there was a good action movie with Woody Harrelson. But take Kevin Hart out the movie, this movie would have been dope. But because you put Kevin Hart in there, he just slowed everything down and just fucked the whole experience up. You know, that, that's, that's like putting salt in and sweeten Kool-Aid. It just doesn't work. At least I don't think it does. So yeah, that's why a man from Toronto can kick rocks as well. <laughs> Number seven is Honk for Jesus. Now, this was supposed to be, I guess, a Christian comedy with Regina Hall and, um, oh, man, I forgot that his name, uh, Killmonger's Pops. Uh, this was supposed to be an intelligent movie about church corruption and pastors and how they're imperfect people, how they get over on the congregation. You know, there, there was an intelligent movie in there somewhere. But it was just a real offbeat comedy that got no laughs. And when it got serious, she didn't take it seriously. Regina Hall was the only thing that halfway made this movie watchable. But this was a snooze fest. This, it gave me nothing but fucking sleep. Okay, so yeah, honk for Jesus. Fuck out of here. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm supposed to say Jesus and, and F in the same sentence. Lord, forgive me. Damn. I need to go to church. <laughs> Number six is Firestarter. Yes, the remake to the OG Drew Barrymore 1984 sci-fi semi-classic. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't actually exactly call it a classic, but yo, the way that OG Firestarter ended was was fucking off the chain. I mean, kind of a snooze fest throughout, but yo, that ending, yo, let the bodies hit the floor, and this one was just boring. I, I did. I don't even have nothing to say about this movie. It was boring, and that's it. <laughs> boring, dull, and just. Ass. Bitch, what the fuck was what the fuck was that? Number five is Hellraiser, or what I like to call Hellraiser Light. Okay, you got light beer, then you got beer, you got lager, okay? You got Crown Royal Black, and then you got Crown Apple, which is a sissy fired sweetened drink, okay? That's what Hellraiser is. Hellraiser is for people that drink wine coolers, okay? This is Hellraiser Light. This is nothing like the OG from back in the day where you see the, the hooks going through the flesh and ripping them apart and Jesus swept and the Cenobites and the close-up of the disturbance and, and, the, and the grossness and the gassiness of the fucking creatures. No, this was a light PG-13 version that's made for girls that read Twilight, okay? I hated this movie. It absolutely sucked. And yes, it put me to sleep. You're going to hear me say this a lot. All these movies on this list put me to sleep, and this one is no exception. Bitch, what the fuck was, what the fuck was that? Number four, and Mike from Did You See That? If he watches, you're probably going to be shocked, but not so much because you know how I feel about this movie. But this one made your top uh, best of the year, and this is one of my worst movies of the year because this one definitely had my pressure up, and I can feel the pressure pill kicking in because, actually, uh, that, that's turmeric that I took. <laughs> but turmeric is good for lowering your pressure, too. I did a whole five or six minute rant in my car about why this movie was bad. Fuck Barbarian, okay? It, it, it took something that was that started out promising, and then it took a, a turn into a damn garbage truck, and I smelled nothing but rotten eggs and rat shit after that, man. This movie was terrible. All I can think about is that big-ass hairy nipple in my fucking eye as I'm watching on the big screen. No. No, it, it, it starts out kind of like how uh, Flesh, uh, Fresh starts out, the movie Fresh, with Sebastian Stan. And then it turns into a uh, malignant kind of, a uh, malignant slash episode of the X-Files. That, that's what it turns. We just turned into something ridiculous, comedically bad. I walked out and then the people agreed with me. They said, yo, that movie was trash. So yeah, Barbarian, fuck that movie. Bitch, what the fuck was, what the fuck was that? Number three is the mosquito. Bzzz, coming back to fuck with me again. Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg return in me time. And this movie's high up on the list because I did not finish it. All right, the moment where Kevin Hart took a took a little pebble turd shit on the bed, right? That that, that sticky shit that sticks to the side of the toilet. Once he took a shit on the bed, I'm like, okay, this movie's just full of Kevin Hart taking a shit or slipping in turtle shit and just screaming. Okay, the only somewhat funny part in this movie was when he ran to the mountain lion and he had the cubby and threw the cubby and ran away from the mountain lion. That part was actually kind of funny, but other than that. I, I could not finish this movie. It was just that bad. Kevin Hart, I don't know what the fuck he's trying to do. I know he dismissed everybody that shits in his movies, but bro, we're okay, we are the people that's paying Netflix to watch your shit. 
Okay, so our opinion should matter. Okay, so you can't expect to give us uh, subpar content and expect us to clamor over you. No, like, dude, I, I fuck with you, brother, but your movies are not it lately, man. I mean, sh goddamn. <laughs> Number two was another movie that I did not finish. I think I had maybe 15 minutes left in the movie, but by this time, I just did not give a fuck anymore. And that Shudder's VHS 99. Uh, I did watch some Shudder movies this year. Some of them not so good. Some of them pretty awesome, you know, like the one with the, uh, the, the, the social media guy that got stuck in the haunted house. That was pretty good. But VHS 99, this is supposed to be an anthology movie. Okay, I heard good things about the VHS uh, series. I like a good anthology horror movie, like creep show and stuff like that. But this was not the business. This was so but ugly, trashy. <sighs> Wait for the pressure to kick in even more. Yeah, yeah, I have nothing. I have nothing to say about this movie. Yeah, it, it, it once again put me to sleep. I think I I stopped where the girl turned to Medusa. I think she had Medusa snakes coming out of her head, and it just it, it just sucked overall, man. Uh, yeah, there, there was a, a segment with the game show with the black girls on the game show, and she was treated bad because she was black, and then the mother got revenge and. Man, I listen. Even drunk, this movie doesn't work. I, I'd rather eat cat shit with a knit needle, okay? I, I, I'd rather have Lizzo sit on me than to watch this shit again. Oh, Lizzo joke. Oh shit, you talking about Lizzo? Man, you talking about Lizzo? You're not exactly a, a bag of bones yourself, motherfucker. Yeah! <laughs> Number one, I got through this. I'm sweating and I'm almost done. Whew. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Gracias de Jesus. Number one is The Monsters. This was an easy one. Another movie that I almost didn't finish. I don't think I finished. I think I have five minutes left. So yeah, the last three movies on this list I did not finish. So The Monsters. All right, the Rob Zombie movie was, this was not even made for TV. This is not even made for YouTube. Okay, YouTubers have more talent than this shit. This is not even Tubi level, okay? This was, I don't know what Rob Zombie was going for. I don't know if, if he was trolling or he was like really trying to sabotage universal or what but bro I, I, what the fuck did you do <laughs> i don't know if this was a comedy a love story or a kids film a light horror movie like bro i don't know what the hell you was going for man that yo, yo this movie had the personality of a wet mop sucked all right so yo i'm done i'm done this is my first time ever doing a worse uh top 10 movies of the year it wasn't fun because i don't like ranting but damn it, there you is. All right. This is my last video of the year. Comment below what your uh, worst top movies were of the year, whatever. Take a pressure pill if you need to. But I will see y'all next year when, uh, what's that the movie with the little girl that looks like like uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen? Uh, yeah, I'll be reviewing that one. But yeah, happy New Year's, y'all. Be safe. Love y'all. Peace in the bottle of hair grease.